guys, my name is Steve. I'm from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. I have been a photographer for the last 10 years of my life, taking fine art pictures, commercial photos, big ads, things that have been published all over the world. And I'm here today with Impath to teach you guys the basics of how to take a really cool photo. Whether you're just out taking pictures with your phone, you see something you like, or you know you're, you wanna be a photographer one day and you've got one of these DSLR cameras, you can totally use the same skills that we're gonna teach over these lessons to apply to both of these things. The goal by the end of this is that that you have the basic skills to see a really cool photo, um, understand angles and perspectives and how to you know, use the camera on whatever lens you're using um, to be able to make a photo feel and have a little bit of emotion. So today we're gonna learn about different perspectives. Perspective is a different way you see a photo. So most people every day see like, you know, you're standing and you're looking at somebody, that's the perspective you generally see. If you're sitting down with your friends having a conversation at a table, that's a normal perspective. And what we wanna do is take pictures that have a little bit of an interesting or a different look. It's something that people don't see every day. We're so used to just seeing things how we normally see them every day of our lives. And when you can take a second to be a little bit creative, this is a skill that really doesn't take any technical knowledge. It just takes being patient and just looking around and really understanding a moment and then using your own mind and your own creativity to make something normal look really, really good. So today, all you're gonna need is a camera if you've got one, if you've signed one out from your school. If you don't have a camera or you're just more comfortable with your phone, all of our phones have cameras, iPods have cameras, whatever you're using that has a camera, this lesson is gonna be able to help you guys. The first term we're gonna learn is rule of thirds. Now, if you've never heard this before, the easiest way to understand it is if you're looking through your camera lens, whichever you're using, and you imagine a hashtag through the entire frame of what you're seeing, or if you have a picture you've already taken and you just imagine or draw a hashtag in it, where the lines in the hashtag intersect are the rule of thirds. There's four of them there. And what you can do is put your subject, whatever you're taking a picture of, off to one side in one or two of those thirds. And when you do that, it gives a more interesting perspective to what you're taking a picture of. It lets a little bit of open space on either side of your subject kind of tell a story or set a little bit of focus towards what you're taking a picture of. When you do that, the human eye naturally is drawn to those points. If you ever think of making eye contact with a person and it kind of feels awkward and you start to look away, maybe you get a little bit nervous. When you have a photo where something falls into the rule of thirds, it actually is a more inviting photo. It makes people more drawn to the subject. You can use this technique on photographing people, on photographing things you can have just an object and if you're framing it off to one side to leave an open space beside it or vertical with an open space above it you're gonna allow more of a story to be told in your photo I personally use rule of thirds in most of the photos I take of people because I find that taking a picture just of somebody right in the middle of my camera versus taking a picture where I leave a little bit of open space to kind of tell a story of who that person is makes my pictures always look interesting. Another technique that's good is getting on different levels when you take a picture. And what I mean by that I often say is worm's eye and bird's eye. So if you think of taking a picture from a perspective of a bird from way, way up high, taking a picture down on something versus taking a picture, you know, at the same level of somebody or much lower than them to make them look very tall. Taking pictures from a different height makes an interesting perspective. A lot of the times they photograph models from a, like a lower angle taking a knee to make them appear taller. If you want something to appear smaller, you can take a picture from above. Just applying the worm's eye and the bird's eye different heights to a photo is as easy as crouching down or just climbing up on something to take the same picture. You'll find if you take a picture straight on and then you crouch down and take a photo and then maybe you climb up and you take a photo from somewhere else of the same thing, it looks so much different depending on what you're doing. A third technique you can use is leading lines. And what that is is taking a picture of your subject but having something in the background pointing towards it. I always use examples like the lines in the road pointing towards a car or somebody sitting beside lockers in a, in a school and having the locker lines pointing towards their subject. Anything where you can have your subject and it looks like the horizon's pointing at it or something in the distance is pointing towards who you're taking a picture of is gonna really draw 
your subject, whatever you're taking a picture of, into the photo. It's gonna be, everybody knows what you're taking a picture of, but when you have those little things that can point towards your photo, it makes that subject pop even more and really like stand out. The cool part about these framing techniques is that you can apply multiple different perspectives to one single photo. You can use rule of thirds to put your subject off to the side and then at the same time shoot it from a very low angle, a, wor a worm's eye, to make them look very powerful in that picture as well. Or you can apply leading lines in rule of thirds to the same photo or bird's eye in leading lines if you're taking a picture above and the lines on a, on a road pointing towards your subject. The more techniques that you can incorporate into one picture, the stronger that picture is going to be and the cooler it's going to look as an art piece or just as a photo for yourself. So that's it guys, that is the first lesson in the basics of photography. Just the perspectives of how you're taking a picture. So next time you're out taking pictures, you just have your phone, maybe you're doing an Instagram post or a Snapchat or even, even a TikTok, think about how you've positioned your camera and think about where your subject is. And then try moving the camera around. Try using rule of thirds. Try seeing if there's some leading lines around that can point at your subject. Think about crouching down, standing up, taking different pictures. See if maybe you can apply multiple of those angles at the same time. And then just look at how the picture looks from when you initially took it or with those changes and adding those different techniques. And you'll notice that your pictures are gonna start getting really interesting really quick and you're gonna probably be taking way more pictures because you're gonna notice how good you get really quick with just these techniques. I'm gonna leave it at that for now, but the next lesson I do, we're gonna talk a little bit about lighting and focus and how you can kind of find light in different areas and how you can get close to subjects to be able to blur out the background learning technical lighting and how to find light and shadows in different scenarios to make your pictures have a mood. And also we're gonna teach you different techniques on how to focus with the camera to be able to blur out your background or have a really sharp detailed picture. So that's all gonna come up on the next one. Stay tuned and we'll see you then.